Hello, my name is Margaret Murphy and it's a pleasure to welcome you to this edition of Off the Shelf, a book discussion series brought to you by the Conference Board. Today I will be sitting down with Lars Sudman to discuss his latest book, Innovation That Sticks. Lars is Council Director for the Conference Board's recently launched Strategy and Transformation Council and the CFO Business Unit Council operating since 2016 here in Europe. Prior to this, Lars held various management roles in strategy and finance, including Business Unit Strategy Leader as well as CFO Belgium of Procter & Gamble. He is the Principal of Sudman & Company a consulting firm specialised in strategy execution and change leadership. Additionally, he is a lecturer on leadership and high performance organisations at universities in Germany and Belgium. He has featured in BBC Capital, The Economist Career Network, Fast Company Inc and many more and has given various TED Talks on leadership and innovation. Lars, you're very welcome to the studio today. Thank you for joining us to discuss your recently published book, Innovation That Sticks. Oh, thanks for inviting me. Pleasure to be here. Good. In today's dynamic and uncertain environment, several steadfast business questions are, how do you innovate? How do you structure your organization, your team, and indeed your personal life? Generally, it's thought you need a detailed plan and everything laid out for the future. However, in your book, Lars, you invite readers to discover and embrace the spaghetti principle and really make innovation stick. Lars, can you explain what you mean by the spaghetti principle and why do we need it? Yes, of course, the spaghetti principle. Now, what is the spaghetti principle? Fundamentally, if you think about how to cook spaghetti, for those of you who cook spaghetti from time to time, there are globally in the world around about three to four methods on how you can say they are ready to eat. What are those methods? Well, you can time them, of course. You say 12 minutes after 12 minutes, okay, fine, I can eat them. You can taste them, of course, and see, ah, they're nice al dente and so on. You can look at them and say, ah, I just know they are ready. Or you can do one thing, and that is to throw them at the wall and see if they stick. And if they stick, well, they're ready to eat. Maybe a bit over ready, but let's not go into this one, but they're ready to eat. If not, they would fall off the wall. And I think that is a fantastic metaphor also for approaching innovation in today's world throwing things at the wall, seeing if they stick. That used to have a bit of a negative connotation. It's like, oh, they don't know what they're doing. Um, They're just throwing stuff at the wall and see if it sticks and so on. But I think in today's super fast changing world, where very often we don't have a lot of experience, think about digital technologies and and so on, like very recent technologies and very fast moving environments. Mm -hmm. In this field, in these environments, we don't have a lot of experience. Mm -hmm. And I do believe the only way or one of the only ways in order to have success in this field is have a structured process for throwing things at the wall and seeing if they stick. This is, of course, a metaphor in a way of not only products, but also all kinds of ways, approaches, business models, ideas, and so on, constantly throwing at the wall and seeing what sticks. And what sticks, you continue doing. What doesn't stick, well, you replace. And that is fundamentally the spaghetti principle. Okay. Great. Okay. And which areas is the spaghetti principle applicable? Well, there's. In, I do believe it's in many, many areas in various fields. Of course, the first thing that comes to mind is product portfolio. Basically, for a company, an organization, a business unit. Okay, there is new ways, new new products, and so on, new offerings to our customers that we throw at the wall and see if they stick towards the customer. Um, But it can be a lot more, um, a lot more fields than just product innovation. It can also be, of course, new maybe companies that we work with, startups, organization, a corporate venturing portfolio, basically, where you have a dedicated unit where you, so to speak, metaphorically, of course, throw ideas, Mm -hmm. products at the wall and see if they stick. That is fundamentally what what many organizations do with the the product portfolio. 
But it can also be other, other fields. It can be different approaches. It can be optimization pro uh, approaches. One of the fields, uh, one of the things that I liked was one manufacturing plant. Basically, the plant leader said, look, um, I have here, he was operating in the consumer goods area with, with different filling plants, uh, filling um, lines. So filling uh, products, they are bottle filling, so to speak. Mm -hmm. And he said, you know, I have 12 of my lines. 11 lines are optimized for perfection, basically, and for efficiency. But my 12th line, there, every week, I throw something at the wall and see if it sticks, basically. So I try out new techniques, new environments, new things, uh, every day. So that, you know, if it, doesn't go, if it doesn't stick, well, that's fine. But if it does stick, that new methodology, that new thing that we heard, that new experiment that we did, well, then we can operate this on, on all mm. of the other 11 mm. lines. So that is also fine. Yeah. But it's also applicable to fields like, for me, fields like leadership. You know, for me, fundamentally, if you want to lead in innovation, you also have to innovate the way you lead, so to speak. Mm -hmm. And what I encourage every, every business leader, every leader to do is also rethink the way they lead and operate the organization. So what I see the best leaders do is really constantly also throwing different ways on how to lead the organization at the wall and see if they stick as mm -hmm. well. New meeting formats, new ways of interaction, new ways, uh, new ways of engagement. That is also what we see here, and that's uh, that's where it's applicable. So it's what what I would encourage business leader to do, and what I've seen like greatest um, uh, companies do is not only look at this one from their from from the innovation portfolio, mm -hmm. product portfolio mm -hmm. side of things, but also rethink it from a business um, uh, business model approach, from uh, services. What are the internal offerings that we have? Mm -hmm. What are the internal processes? Can you maybe there throw some things at the wall and see mm -hmm. if they stick mm -hmm. in a safe environment, basically? What are the leadership approaches? Mm -hmm. So really think that broad both externally and internally continuously getting into the motors of throwing things at the wall and see if they stick. Mm. So mm. using it uh, for the process end of the operations, but also culturally, maybe within the organization. Also culturally, yeah. and especially taking yeah. what is in my circle of influence and can I throw some things here at the wall and see if yeah. they stick. Yeah. Okay, great. Okay. In your book, you talk about the spaghetti soup. <laughs> I'm probably not pronouncing that in the Super best Italian. <laughs> the, the extra when it comes to innovation, going the extra mile. Can you elaborate on, on this some Yes, more? superiori, <laughs> that's how we call that. And, and w when I discussed it and so on, like some Italians uh, suggested me, yes, that's uh, it's that the extra spaghetti, that's maybe how you can call that, the superiori. Yes, what is that? Now, typically, if you approach this, this um, or if you follow that approach, throwing things at the wall and see if the sticks, that already gets you quite far. You get into the mode of experimenting in all different fields of your life. However, very often what we see is that people are stuck in the field that they only, quote unquote, try out things that they always wanted to try out, mm -hmm. that they think that might work. That sounds maybe, that sounds maybe okay. Mm -hmm. However, we're very often anchored. We only operate if we do that we only operate in the fields of the things like oh we might think they're going to work and so on which mm -hmm. is a typical human nature uh, mm -hmm. thing so we might think oh yeah based on experience that might work however in this very in this dynamic environment that we just talked about fast changing new mm -hmm. we also need to throw in sometimes that real 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 big access to access the areas of the uh, what is sometimes the called the unknown unknowns mm -hmm. basically mm -hmm. if we only think like oh yeah i think that's going to work i'm leaving a whole world out mm -hmm. basically so that's why what i encourage people to do in their spaghetti portfolio so to speak to also add a little bit maybe 10 percent of the things that they try out to really go a bit wild there or a bit random to really catch also maybe the things that you haven't captured before mm -hmm. because times have changed technology have changed my favorite example of this one is is um, is of course the startup world so i mean startups are for me so to speak societies or companies uh, spaghetti that are being thrown at the wall <laughs> yeah. so to speak it's wild ideas lots of them fail but some of them mm -hmm. stick mm -hmm. and some of them stick only because it's the right time and the right technology for this one a favorite example of this, it's an internet meme, but it really highlights that process. Basically, back in 1995, um, uh, or back in the, in the 1980s, people said, oh, don't get in other people's car, in strange people's cars, and so on. In the early days of the internet, let's say, in the 2000s, people said, oh, don't meet people from the internet. That's dangerous, and so on. And, and might be right, and good advice. Mm -hmm. Now, now, we're 2020, and one of the most successful companies uh, and startups in the world is Uber, where literally... 
you go into a car of a stranger you meet over the internet yes. but somehow it yes. works yeah. and why does it work well because new technologies trust building mechanisms and technologies come together and actually make this innovation also stick could you have predicted this in this time ago probably not but it is a spaghetti that was thrown at the wall and stuck basically Absolutely. so the push there the superiority factor there is also to tap into what is called the unknown unknowns and the only way we're doing that is really going a bit more extreme having the 10 percent of the wild or maybe even random ideas in your spaghetti portfolio mm -hmm. of things that you try out not all of it of course but some of that in the spaghetti portfolio mm -hmm. interesting interesting we're going to take a short break for some quick announcements and we'll be back in just a minute to continue continue this conversation with lars sudman on his recently published book innovation that sticks looking for additional business insights in the subject area and beyond this podcast, go to tcb.org forward slash EU and explore our economy, strategy and finance centre. Uncover a large array of products hosted by the conference board in focus areas like global economy, labour markets and many others. Products include peer-to-peer -peer networking events, expert briefings, publications, data and analysis, webcasts, videos and blogs. Hello and welcome back to our conversation with Lars Sudman on his book Innovation That Sticks. Lars, can you give some more examples where the spaghetti principle is applicable? Some more examples on how uh, people have, uh, have applied this. Well, let's really dive maybe further on what, what we talked. It's not only the um, innovative products and so on that we tried out, but actually also new management methods. And if I go in, and, and that's where I challenge every leader to do. Very often innovation is a very abstract tool. Lots of companies say, ah, we want to be innovative, and then they put some beanbags in the room and some, you know, some table foosball, and then say like, now nah, yeah. we are like Google, now yeah. we're, we're innovative. Um, but I would, I would really specifically encourage every leader to, to everybody who has, who has some kind of, um, uh, some kind of impact on the um, on, on, on the organization culture, but also on the overall innovativeness, so to speak, on the organization, to really start by themselves, start in their circle of influence. And w w one of the fields, one of the easiest fields that, that you can see is like, for example, the meetings you conduct with your team, your organization, and so on. Can you throw some things there at the wall and see if it sticks, basically? Mm -hmm. so can you reinvent there? Which is, it's, the meetings are not to be underestimated. It's not only a huge cost factor, of course, but huge potential to try out new things. Mm -hmm. So what I've seen even people do is really reduce the time, changing from sit-down meetings with cookies and coffee and everything to stand-up meetings, to walking meetings. Some software teams go down and do something like plank meetings, basically, where they sit down in, in a plank position to have uh, the meeting done maybe in two, three minutes. Mm -hmm. That's maybe stretching it a bit. Mm. But one of the things that I, that I really like was, uh, was an example from, um, uh, from Silicon Valley entrepreneur. She said, like, you know, all of my board meetings are full water meetings. What does that mean? Well, at the beginning, everybody drinks two glasses of water and the first person who needs to leave the room, well, that person closes the meeting, so to speak. Right. I mean, these might be, it might seem like little things, but these are things that everybody can, can take immediately mm -hmm. and, make, um, and make innovation immediately work, mm -hmm. basically. More, um, more on the innovation side of things, how this can be put into practice, like one of the companies I interviewed um, for this one, what they said, you know, Everybody, um, we allow everybody to come up with a new idea and throw it at the wall. We give them a time box of eight months. Within eight months, they have to show like some concrete results. But there's like super low threshold funding. Everybody can get this in there. And they said, okay, you get eight months. And after eight months, re you report back based on this. Why eight months? They said it's short enough, basically, so that you can have tangible results, but also long enough so that you can test it. Um, uh, it was in, in, in machine engineering and so on. So that that's where you can try out a couple of things. So what they've seen and said is like, okay, li some little funding, you get very fast, you get a time of eight months, and after eight months we talk back, mm -hmm. basically. Mm -hmm. And that has, um, in, in the results of them, have seen that, that innovation was not something anymore that the innovation department does. What, what the people I interviewed, they've seen that great innovation is something that everybody does. I have an idea, okay, great, I mm -hmm. put it out, and everybody knows, okay, after that time, I come back and report back, basically, mm -hmm. if it sticks. Mm -hmm. And as you say, 
it's 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 a culture everybody all the employees are trying it so the the risk the failing is not then it it may work it may not work just try it that's but failure thing. isn't frowned upon then within that organization um, within that culture absolutely yeah. and 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 i think that is i mean we heard we hear of course of this massive celebration of failure at the mm-hmm. moment but but that's not where i want to go but exactly how you phrase it like failure is not frowned upon mm-hmm. it's and i think that for me is the critical part mm-hmm. of the spaghetti principle mm-hmm. is it's n- it's not that we say hooray 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 we failed no it's like of course mm-hmm. we would love that they mm-hmm. stick mm-hmm. but if they don't stick well we have learned something new. yes and yeah. it's fundamentally that culture of sometimes you win, sometimes you learn. Mm-hmm. That is what yeah. makes it stick. Yeah. So it's not frowned upon. It's like, okay, great, we've tried. We know it doesn't work here. What's the next one that we can mm-hmm. throw? Mm-hmm. That is the culture mm-hmm. and that is the attitude mm-hmm. to throw in. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, so does this principle then re- replace the strategy process that organizations have used for eternity. Um, so it's not that it replaces. I mean, we said in the beginning, like, okay, rethink the way you do it. You don't need to do endless plan. You go with the spaghetti principle, we'll see what sticks. For me, it doesn't replace the strategy process. Fundamentally, you need to have strategy. Where do you want to go as well? What is your, your, your overall purpose as an organization? Where do you want to go? However, for me, the spaghetti principle is, an, is a, what I would call how to win strategy. Mm-hmm. So it's a modus operandi, like how do we operate in this environment? How do you choose in strategy process, where do you play? Uh, where do you focus on, which market and so on? However, as a how to win, you say fundamentally in this business unit, in this area, in this organization, we continuously throw things at the wall and see if they stick, even if we don't know if they're going to work in the beginning. But that is our modus operandi. So we set ourselves like this throwing at the wall and seeing if it sticks as a as an as an overall approach and that's why for me a spaghetti principle so to speak is part of a strategy process great okay great thanks lars um one final question around your book how does a leader or an organization implement this principle and is it an easy task to do <laughs> well, it's uh, how do you implement? That's um, uh, that is a very good question because that's very often how, where, where I get the most discussions mm-hmm. with, with leaders. They say like, "Yeah, I want to do that, but mm-hmm. somehow I need to get my organization mm-hmm. along and so on." Now, is it easy to implement? I don't think it's that easy, but it's possible. Um, how do you implement it best? Well, one of the things we already talked about this failure element is crucial, and I think what is absolutely crucial there is that people shift their rewards, be that really the formal rewards, but also the informal rewards, where you say, well, good job, and so on, Mm -hmm. away from results. Mm -hmm. So not only results, but also process. I'm not saying going totally away from results, but having really in in your mind the combination of process and results. Because if you, I mean, I've, I've, I've seen some organizations where still is like, okay, no, the only thing that matters are results. If you have this in a very dynamic environment where it's uncertain what's the right course mm-hmm. of action is, people will stick with the surefire things that they know are going to work. Yes. So whoever tries out an innovative project and so on is like, well, yeah, do I want to be part of that project? Because it's uncertain if it's going to work. Mm-hmm. But that really hinders this. This kind mm-hmm. of like, oh, no, only results matter for promotion, mm-hmm. for mm-hmm. a great job done and so on. No, also approach matters. No. Not only approach, of course, um, but the combination of approach and results, process and results. That shifting the rewards towards this is one of the key things I would push leaders and, and as well as HR and, and everybody who is, who is involved in, in, in the reward system of the company, of the incentive system of the company towards it. So that is one of the key things. So focus on the process. Um, then the the other thing that uh, in order to implement this is you literally have to be or very half strongly have to be open to new ideas and that is fundamentally having kind of um, sometimes called an i don't know attitude Mm -hmm. i don't know if it's going to work that Mm -hmm. still makes me a leader Mm -hmm. so to speak Mm -hmm. because i know the process of finding out well we test it out we throw it at the wall and see if it sticks so i don't know if it's going to work that sounds interesting we don't know if it's going to work. Let's not overplan it, but let's throw it at the wall. And w- if you identify these key frames, like this one company that said, the eight eight months we give you, okay, mm-hmm. we, we don't want to overanalyze now, but after eight months we talk back and see if it sticks. And if it sticks, great, we do more of it. If not, well, also great, we learn something for it. And getting into that process is, is I think, absolutely vital. Right, yeah. 
Okay, great. Well, Lars, we are we're coming to the end of our podcast, and in this section, we we do like to ask um, our authors what they are currently reading, and um, and in this case, where you're finding your inspiration, where where to find the spaghetti to throw at the wall, mm-hmm. where you're finding it. So, what are you reading now, Lars? Yeah, I'm reading always several books at the same time. So I have a, I have a, this this bad habit. But um, in terms of nonfiction, I'm reading currently two two books at the same time. A bit uh, they're competing with each other. One is called Super Forecasting, which is a fantastic book by um, uh, by a psychology foca- um, um, uh, professor who has conducted over decades various research uh, on how do actually like political forecasters people we see on tv and so on what is actually their forecast accuracy and Mm -hmm. what what can we learn from a program that they've run on super forecasters people who really were able to to do that right and i found that uh, that idea extremely interesting to see um the idea of uh, um, of that we very often in companies we very often look at forecast accuracy very often what we see Overall, like where people make forecasts, do we really look at the accuracy? Very yeah. often not. Mm-hmm. So it's a very interesting book. The other one that I'm reading currently, I was I recently gave uh, two keynote speeches in 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 the Middle East, and um, I came across there actually it was it was displayed uh, the book there, the new Silk Roads, which is a fantastic book on exploring the new silk roads mm-hmm. of, of uh, the new trade routes and so on in in okay. the world, which uh, which I can highly recommend. It's a fantastic read. And where do you get your inspiration from? From books? Or yeah, I, inspiration, <laughs> I, I do get my inspiration also also from books, but also from a from lot of other fields and, and so on. And um, now I, I'm often inspired when I get a new idea from a new book, which mm-hmm. uh, which very often I have in, in these nonfiction elements. Now, one book that, that came up that really inspired me was... Uh, um, was a book I read, uh, yeah, like uh, a couple of years ago, um, by an author called Ryan Holiday, um, mm-hmm. uh, which is called "The Obstacle Is the Way." It is a book on Stoic philosophy, which I which I uh, find find very interesting and, and intriguing, and and the book's title alone says what it is: "The Obstacle Is the Way," and it's it's very inspirational because it reframes the way we can we, we we can deal with obstacles that actually the obstacle is the way it's not just getting m- away right. from obstacle yeah. but how to deal with that so yeah. he goes a lot into deep uh, ancient roman and greek um, stoic philosophy okay interesting okay great that's a great list of books lars thank you for sharing that with us and thank you for coming today to talk about your inspiring and thought-provoking book innovation that sticks you can purchase the book, of course, on Amazon as well as directly with the publisher under its.dicure, d i e k e u r e dot b e. And to our listeners, thank you for our audience. Thank you for listening today. And if you enjoyed this episode, please remember to subscribe to our Off the Book Discussion podcast series or explore the entire catalogue of podcast programming from the conference board by visiting our website at tcb.org forward slash podcasts. Thank you and goodbye.